Planned Parenthood, America's largest abortion vendor, announced yesterday it's officially dropped out of the Title X program and it will forego nearly 60 million bucks in taxpayer funding. That's your money and my money. Rather than comply with the Trump administration rule requiring that it separate its abortions from the rest of its operations. That's been going on for a long time. This whole thing with fungible assets, I think, would be the term. Uh, joining me here in just a moment to celebrate this victory against Planned Parenthood is Republican Congressman Ron Estes. He represents the 4th District of Kansas, and he serves on the House Ways and Means Committee. Well, prior to becoming an elected official, Representative Estes grew up on his family farm in Kansas. He went on to earn a degree in civil engineering and a graduate degree in business administration. He began his career in consulting and management roles for industries that included aerospace, energy, and manufacturing. And following his private sector career, Representative Estes served his fellow Kansas, Kansans as Sedgwick County, Kansas Treasurer and then Kansas State Treasurer. Congressman Estes, it's great to have you back right here on Washington Watch. Well, thank you, Evan. It's great to be back here to be able to talk about this story. Well, it's a it's a great story. And uh, tell us about this new rule, how it came to be. I, I mean, I think we've been trying to separate Planned Parenthood from about half a billion dollars in taxpayer money for quite a while. The 60, the 60 million is a, a good start. So uh, tell us about this new rule and how it works. So really, yeah, that's so I, I was one of the, the members of Congress who helped lead a letter to Secretary Azar to help implement this rule. And, and we're, we're calling it a new rule, but in reality, it's the old rule. It's the rule that President Reagan had put in pl- effect. Uh, it was upheld by the Supreme Court, but President Clinton changed it. And basically what uh, what President Trump and Secretary Azar in Health and Human Services has done is re-implement that rule. And, and basically what it says is the law, when Title X was created in the 1970s, the law specifically said that abortion should not be used as a method of family planning, but that the federal government's going to provide money for family planning. And so the rule requires that if an organization takes Title X money, uh, to, to help with family planning, then they have to have, they could do abortions, but they have to have a completely separate facility, has to be physically different, has to be financially different. Uh, they have to make sure that they, they don't refer people to abortions uh, at their facilities. And if there's suspected cases of of sexual abuse, particularly of minors, they have to follow the state law. So basically what, what the secretary is doing with this new ruling is is putting that 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 old rule, that true definition of what the law was in place. And and what Planned Parenthood has shown is that they'd rather make money off of abortions than they would to, to provide good family planning using uh, federal funds. Well, you know, in the last couple of years, it's really, and to, to the point you just made about Planned Parenthood, that it's become obvious that abortion is the number one deal that they're interested in because it's the one that makes the money. And, of course, uh, Congressman, you've, you have seen the evidence that uh, was uh, unearthed regarding their sale of fetal body parts uh, for various uh, different things. And, in fact, uh, they're kind of in big trouble still, I think, for what they did in the past. Now, as you mentioned, this rule's been around for quite a while, and Planned Parenthood uh, used to kind of hide behind saying, well, we have we keep that money separate from from the abortion side. So is it just because we have a new administration that means what they say here that this rule's actually being enforced? Well, it, it's actually good. It, it, the, the Secretary Azar had to go through and, and actually write the rules and regulations, uh, put those back in place, go through the comment period of which uh, Planned Parenthood and, and some of their allies tried to drag the process down and, and slow it down with uh, with thousands of, of comments, and including Planned Parenthood's comment was 100 pages long, just to slow this whole process down. Uh, so, so it's had to be a step-by-step process. It's taken a couple of years to get through that that effort to put this rule back in place. Uh, but it, it's really the the whole intent of what the Title X funding was to make sure that there's money for family planning, and we're going to continue to provide family planning money. There's not uh, a, a reduction at all in the money. It's just that Planned Parenthood chose not to participate in providing those family planning services uh, using Title X money. 
Now, as I mentioned kind of at the beginning of this segment, talked about the fact that this represents a, somewhere in the realm of $60 million. And, and as many of our listeners know, Planned Parenthood actually has received somewhere up to close of, to half a billion dollars in taxpayer money per year. What is the uh, the other 440, roughly, 440, 430 million? Where, where is that? What's the status of that money? So, so that money comes through the Medicaid program, and so uh, the the clinics, the, the facilities that uh, Planned Parenthood do operate, uh, do provide some uh, Medicaid services uh, to to individuals across the country. So it's being paid for through our Medicaid dollars uh, from that standpoint. But we we specifically were were focused on the Title X funding because it was a clear violation of the law the way it was written in the 1970s. And and the expectation is that federal funds ought to be used for family planning uh, under the Title X uh, concept. And we want to make sure that 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 $60 million, uh, what we really wanted was to make sure that the people still could got their family planning support and their services, and uh, the funding's still there. It's just that Planned Parenthood chose to, to go make money off of abortions than they did to uh, provide plan- family planning right. services. Yeah, and this might be a little bit of a controversial question, but how did the, the government, why did the government even get into the business of quote-unquote family planning in the first place? So that that's really a long-term aspect, thinking back in the early 70s, uh, with uh, particularly how do you support uh, and, and provide uh, assistance to low-income women uh, in particular, and, and helping them with some of the, the medical uh, information, some of the medical support around family planning services. And so uh, it, it was really more from a health standpoint of making sure that uh, pregnant women uh, could maintain good quality health and understand some of the uh, potential medical complications and medical issues they needed to address. So we wanted to make sure that uh, uh, they could maintain their health. Sure. Now, as I understand it, there are, uh, you know, Planned Parenthood talks about uh, they have this sort of marketing campaign where they, uh, in fact, they had these banners up, and I don't know what, what they're doing now, but they used to say, health care happens here. And, of course, we know that a lot of what they do is abortions. Uh, they hand out contracep- uh, contraceptives to kids. They go out into schools. In fact, um, uh, I know personally a, uh, a lady, she works now for 40 Days for Life. She was a Planned Parenthood director up in Storm Lake, Iowa, for a number of years, about 18 years. She used to go out into the schools and sort of carry the Planned Parenthood uh, birth control. You know, you're going to have sex anyway, so come see us so we can help you out story. Um, and that's, you know, there are a lot of a lot of other facilities and, in, in say, uh, county health clinics and so forth that can provide true health care. Is that right? Versus what Planned there, Parenthood says they do. There really are. There are lots of facilities around, whether it's county health facilities, whether it's it's some of the low income and safety net clinics, or, uh, whether it's, you know, traditional doctor's offices that can that can help with some of those supports. And, and we, our intention is to make sure that uh, family planning and support and health services are still provided. Uh, the, the funding's not being lowered. It's just that Planned Parenthood's chose that they're, they're going to withdraw from that program because they make too much money off of abortion now. Yeah, well, and yeah good for them. Up. Yeah, and, and one of the, that up. Let me ask you about specifically, there's one organization, uh, one organization called the Obria Group. Are you familiar with them? I'm not very familiar with them. Okay. Well, they are they're an uh, they're an example of one of these other organizations and facilities that can provide uh, health care to women and they are actually pro-life clinics, so they are the exact opposite of planned parenthood. They would not think of doing uh, abortions, but they're you know they're receiving uh, about 5 million in Title 10 funds for for to do some of the things that planned parenthood says they do. Well, Marjorie Dannon Felser, she's uh, president of the Susan B Anthony list, uh, which is a pro-life group of course. Uh, explain this news that we're talking about uh, today, Congressman. She said today planned parenthood showed its true colors by prioritizing abortion over family planning, refusing to comply with the Protect Life rule and dropping out of the Title X program. Um, so I, I, I would assume that you would agree with her assessment there. They they really did show their true colors, and, and it, it's kind of sad. I, I 
I really expected that they would probably uh, create some other facilities and use for their abortion, uh, providing abortions the way they did, and continue to take money from uh, for the Title X if they really were wanting to legitimately provide health care and family planning services. But uh, they, I, I guess they make too much money off of abortion, and they'd rather continue that route than provide uh, good quality family planning with federal dollars. Yeah, yeah, that definitely seems to be the case. Well, uh, quickly, in about 30 seconds, what are the next steps in terms of things along these lines that you're hoping to accomplish, especially with respect to Planned Parenthood and receiving federal funds? So this this is a great first step of getting uh, more family planning money out there that actually used legitimately for family planning. Uh, obviously, one of the pieces that was in there that doesn't get talked about is making sure that uh, sexual abuse uh, of minors particularly doesn't happen. And that's one of the things we need to keep an eye out for in some of these abortion clinics. Very good. Representative Ron Estes from Kansas, thanks so much for your time today.